Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian Cafferkey and we've got a really fun for this video which is SQLite Studio. So let me jump in. In my last video I was doing a lot to sell you on the idea of using SQLite with Python to really create a very powerful data analysis platform. Because SQLite is a built-in lightweight run anywhere database which is integrated into Python and it's so amazing that it's just there and you can use it. Maybe people out there might think, well surely Brian, there must be a user-friendly visual interface we can use to manage and query our SQLite tables. And the answer to that is yes. Yes there is and stop calling me Shirley. And most databases now have this kind of idea of a UI but you may not have realized that SQLite also has this. SQLite Studio is not the only one, but it's one I really like because it's very simple to use and provides the functionality that I look for. So I'll show you what I like about it by demonstrating it, but we'll start by installing SQLite Studio and then we'll move on to using it. Type in SQLite Studio. Not surprisingly, you'll see their website here, which is great. Now I made a mistake when I first did this. I clicked the download here and you can do that, but that just gives you an executable and some supporting files to run directly. And it's really meant for more of that portable app. What I want to do though, what you want to do is click on the download and you'll be brought to the GitHub site where they have this. And you have files here for Windows, for Linux, Mac OS, etc. For each one, you have two options. You can get the portable distribution or you can get the installer. I'm going to get the installer. I think it's easier, so I recommend you get that as well. So I'm not going to take this. I want to get this one. Now, if I was on Linux, I would want to get this one, which is a tar.exe. No, I'm sorry. That's not the one I want, but it would be either the tar exe or the studio 3.2.1, but that one does not have the exe. So you have to match the files to know what you want. The iOS files or Mac files are DMG files. So that's pretty straightforward. So I'm looking for install SQLite Studio 3.2.1. Dot exe. Let's see if I can find it. And here it is. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to be saved to my downloads folder. That's great. Now let's open the folder and sorry, open the program, which is fine. I'm going to be running the program. So here I can just say next. It's going to put it in my studio folder. It's going to register it and it's going to create a start menu entry. And this is the things it wouldn't be doing if I just copied the other version. Say next, next, install. Yes. Now I have it installed, so I'm hoping I don't have any errors. This is just installing it again. Finish. And that seems to be about it. So if I go here, you can see it's up here now in my start menu and I can use SQLite Studio. On Windows, I love to put my icons in the bottom of my, my tray here so I can get things quickly. So this is my SQLite Studio, but I could also just as easily go here. So I'm gonna run it from here. And it's very simple interface. It looks again like many others that you probably use with databases. The first thing we need to do is find one of our SQLite files. If you haven't used SQLite, then again, go see my other video, but SQLite just stores its data in a file. So it ends with a .db file. So we need to connect to one. We need to open one of those. So I'm going to say database, add a database, and I need to find one, and I should be in a good folder for that, hopefully. Yeah. So I'm going to open one called Chinook. Chinook is kind of the AdventureWorks test data that comes with SQLite. I like it because it gives you a bunch of files you can query with and learn how to use the tool. And notice it took the main part of the file name and made that the database name. Now, if I say permanent, what that's going to do is when I open SQLite in the future, it'll just show up there and I can access the database. I don't have to keep going and find it. So that's a really nice convenience feature. I can test my connection, which is there. Not really sure how you could fail with that other than a corrupt database, but they put it there. And now that I've got my Chinook database, I, and it's kind of cool, you highlight things, it will just pop up, but I can double click on it and it opens up and shows me what's in it. Now, this is a very standard way that these user interfaces for databases work. And if I click on like albums, that's one of its tables, it kind of opens up like a sort of folder structure, columns, etc. My favorite thing is just this. I can double click on albums and it opens up all these tabs up here that I can look at. This tab is really great because imagine, if you will, you're working in Python, maybe a Jupyter Notebook, and you're querying things and you forget what the columns are. Or maybe you want to know what the data types are. Now, I know you're thinking, I can just do that in Python. I can query it. But it's kind of nice if you could have something you can just refer to, especially if you use multiple screens, right? You could have 
you could have uh, the SQLite light studio running on one screen and just check it for things I can see the structure here I can look at data like what what's in there uh, I can check there's other things in here indexes etc but the other one that's handy is this DDL data definition language in case you're in an interview that's what DDL stands for it's those are the SQL statements that create objects so here we're creating a table I could do a control C cut and paste and then just change a few things and create a new table and of course here we can see for instance really useful to know but we have a references a foreign key so we have a dependency between tables notice when I open this up though I have this tab over in the lower left and then I have this and I have these tabs so this albums in the lower left corner is the parent to all of these other tabs when I'm done I can just close that and it goes away the other thing I can do is double click on a column and it will give me a detailed breakdown of this is a primary key for instance it has a not null check I know what the type is and it's given me again it kind of opened up the window again I can refresh the database I can do a bunch of things here other thing I really like when in doubt in Windows you always right mouse click right mouse click on albums and I get this big list of things I can do the possibilities right I can say create a table and I'll do that real quick and I get this wizard where I can create a table name I can then go in and insert columns, the types, etc. And it's a wizard, essentially, that will bring me step by step to building a table. Uh, let me look at what else I got. I can edit the table. So if I edit this table, I can actually go in here and edit data and everything in my table. I mean, I can really edit this table. I can change some of the structure if I want. There's a lot of power in this. So through the user interface, it's giving us access to a lot of things. And we don't always have to execute SQL statements. I can add a column. I can create an index. SQLite supports indexes, foreign tables or foreign keys, uh, triggers. This is really useful, generate a query. So maybe I want to do an insert, for instance, on this table. I find them tedious to write. This gives me a nice quick value and I can just replace values and then insert into the table. Select is obviously very useful because I can just generate it and then run a query against the database. I can import into the table. The only thing I dislike a little bit with import in this is that I'm used to in SQL Server Management Studio and there I can import and it will create the table based on say a CSV file for me. With this you have to have the table already exist. However, you can export the table and I'm not going to walk through here but if I uncheck some things in next I can actually take the data and put it out to a flat file that I can then use for other things. I can populate a table so there's a wizard that will kind of generate test junk data that I can play with Create similar table is kind of like what I was talking about with the create statement. I can just clone it and make it a little different table. I can reset my auto indexing things. I can erase tables. Then there's some things related to the database. And if I double click on the columns, I've got some things I can do. Uh, also, if I go against the, the top menus, these are things that I can do with the database. If I remove the database, that's just removing the entry in this list. It's not getting rid of the database. I can export the entire database vacuum is a compression so in any database eventually when records and things get deleted they don't actually clean up the data in fact usually they just leave the data in the database it's just marked so there's not read anymore and eventually you have to compress the database or make it all contiguous and get rid of that dead space so you can do that by doing a vacuum postgres uses the exact same name vacuum for doing that you can do integrity checks in the structure, I can create and edit tables as we've seen. So some redundancy here, different ways to get to the same things. You've got a, different ways to organize your view. The most important thing here is you can do a lot of things here. I can do a SQL editor here and, and then run the little arrow and that runs the query. And this is my like window, my toolbar for this particular window. So I can explain the query. I can do format the queries. Uh, what does this one do? Clear execution history, all these different things I can do. I can save and export data save the SQL statements, a lot of different things. I'm not trying to give you a full lesson or training in this. I think it's pretty intuitive. And as you explore, you'll learn more. There is online documentation. Probably the only other thing I want to talk about is this. This allows you to do things like create these huge fonts from my eyes because I need it, but also so it shows up better on the video. Uh, I did that by going into fonts and you can see here I was able to push them up. Now, one a little annoying thing, you may notice that the icons in the toolbar are small. And I would have liked to have made them bigger so you could see them, but I cannot find a way to do that. I don't think there is a way. All kinds of, I can change keyboard shortcuts. So obviously it's shortcuts to do a lot of cool stuff. You can do uh, functions. You can create functions and stuff in this. I think that's the gist of what I wanted to show you in SQLite Studio. So if you've got Python, SQLite, and SQLite Studio, 
you're in a really good place to start doing some serious data analysis. So wrapping up, we get a nice visual insight into the database. That's all I want to say. Like this video, uh, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe and click on the notifications bell. Thank you. Have a great day.